Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Shafa Utrecht. And um, yeah, I think we can we can rise to our feet to, to just enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise.
directly after worship, the kids will go out to Tainzal at the back. I think they know the drill by now. So kids church immediately after the, the worship. Um, we ask parents, please, to, um, to help Renee out as well and uh, come and fetch your kids. Don't disappear for the rest of the afternoon. Come and fetch your kids, please, directly after, after church. And, uh, and uh, yeah, stick around in a, a little bit as well. Um, ask your children what they've learned today. Ask your children what, if, what happened during kids' church. It gives them a little bit of chance to, to really bet stuff in that uh, gets shared today. So, uh, yeah, we, I'm, I'm sure the kids are looking forward to kids' church. Um, it's also for young mothers, is no to three years, young kids, sorry, I'd rather say. There's, a, there's also an opportunity for the mums and dads, if they feel inclined to, to go. Also next to the kids' church, there's a, there's a room there with a, with a screen where you can follow the sermon in there. So um, if the young ones get a little bit uh, restless, you're welcome to, uh, to take them um, to that room. Intercession. Intercession happens every Tuesday. Um, it happens at uh, 7 to 8, and it's an opportunity where anybody is invited, I must firstly say. Anybody's invited that's got a heart for prayer, or even if it's new to you, you haven't done it before, but you'd love to find out a bit more, um, come for intercession on, uh, on Tuesday, where we pray together for Utrecht, we pray together for Shofar, and uh, whatever, whatever God lays um, on our hearts. So that's Tuesdays at Dark and Renee's house. Um, if you'd like to come, please just send them a quick message just to let them know about, um, um, how many people to expect so that they can prepare for that. Small groups, small groups happen, um, some in, uh, in person, but mostly on Zoom and Skype. There's a number of small groups happening for the mothers, au pairs, students, young working people, and families. Um, small groups are one of the four cornerstones of what we believe um, church should be. It's firstly getting together as the body of Christ here yeah, physically on Sundays, but then also um, to continue with that during the week in smaller groups. Um, the other two will... I'll briefly touch on all the encounters series that we do and, and Bible school. But uh, if you want to get involved with a small group, you've never been in a small group, you want to know what a small group is, um, speak to Derek and Renee or to anybody um, or myself or anybody um, that is a small group leader. I think uh, Banish is there at the back as well. Um, ask him a little bit about small groups and see how you can um, get, in, get connected in a small group. Then arise. Arise happens next week, Saturday. Some couple of excited people. I'm sure everybody's excited. Once, I'm telling, once I've told you what it's about. Okay, so. <laughs> Arise is um, a praise and worship evening. It happens next week, Saturday. Two hours of worshipping and praying for Utrecht. It happens in collaboration with a couple of other churches that, um, that we partner with in Utrecht. So it's not just um, Shofar, um, but also a number of other churches also getting together in this building um, for an evening of worship. So what can be cooler on a Saturday night than doing that? It's a good opportunity if you've got friends that have asked you where do you disappear to on Sundays or they've, uh, you know, they've always wondered a little bit about it. It's a good opportunity to bring somebody along, um, you know, somebody that... Uh, yeah, that you trust God to have an appointment with and uh, bring friends or family together and uh, yeah, just come and join us for, for worship on Saturday next week. You don't need to do register, you can just pitch, so that's cool. Encounter 1 happens on 25th of September. Encounter 1 is a series where we um, give you a little bit of um, feedback on what show for um, the building blocks or how what God is installed in our leadership on uh, um, what are the really important things to us. And there's sort of four major topics, which is salvation, baptism, the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, getting filled with the Holy Spirit, and then discipleship. If you're new to Shofar, you haven't done Encounter One, this is a, it's a really nice, informative um, afternoon. Uh, lots of interesting and nice sessions to come and attend to. Um, if you've done Encounter 1 and you want to get involved, we do need some facilitators. So if you've done Encounter 1, you are equipped to facilitate Encounter 1. So 
If, um, if you want to help out Encounter, let Derek and Renee know. If you want to attend Encounter, then there's a list at the tea and coffee at the back where you can put your name down for it. Otherwise, you can register online on, um, all, all the events are also on our website and you can uh, <coughs> register there as well. Small groups training, as I mentioned, small groups are quite important to us. So small groups training happens in October. Um, it's not just for people that feel called to become a small group leader. It's for anybody that wants to know more about small groups. So you all invented, if you attend a small group at the moment or you want to attend a small group or you feel called to become a small group leader, this is, this is something for you. Then um, we always need volunteers. We, we need people to help out at the sound desk, the projection, to help out um, with, the, with the streaming, with the kids' church, um, with worship. It's a, it's a body made up of many members, um, and you can volunteer. Believe me, they will find a spot for you. Um, we'll try not to overburden you, but um, it would be really cool if... Uh, more people can become involved. If you if you feel this is your home and uh, you want to become part here, yeah, I really encourage you to get involved somewhere. You know, it's maybe one Sunday per month or something like that. But it's it's also a nice way to to really experience church in a different way um, uh, is to serve. So really encourage you put your name down for a volunteer. There's a list at the back. You can put your name down anywhere. If you don't know where to put your name down, don't worry, we'll find a spot for you. Okay. Um, as I said, there's tea and coffee at the back afterwards. Come and join us. Please don't disappear. There's no info table, but if you need any more info, ask me or ask Derek and Renee um, or anybody from the worship team. If you need more info, otherwise go to our website where you'll find all the information. Then Melissa is doing the offering. Yes. Stefan. So it's my privilege today just to share a little bit of an offering message with you guys. And um, today is going to be out of 2 Corinthians 9 verse 11. It reads, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So today I just want to share a little bit of a testimony. Um, this is a testimony of a pastor in the United States, and um, one day he was making his way to a, a general store, a supermarket, when he was in the line waiting to pay, and he noted a young family standing in front of him. It was a, a mother and a father and a young child, and um, they didn't have any money, uh, money to pay for their goods, or they didn't have enough, and um, he just felt the urge, and he just slipped a $20 bill. Um, say, don't have to look around, just accept it, Jesus loves you. And the, um, the young family paid, and on they went. And um, at a later stage, the same pastor was also preaching um, in the United States. And um, yeah, a young family pitched up afterwards and come to him just to share their testimony. They said um, they were at the breaking point of their lives. Um, all of them lost their jobs. They had no income, nowhere to go, no family to turn to. So they were at a point where suicide was the only option for them. And um, yeah, and they were actually on their way when they decided just to keep the kid calm. They're gonna like just buy some good sweets for him. Um, but when they got to the the casa or the tiller, um, they didn't have enough money to pay for it. And that's when the moment when the young pastor slipped in the twenty dollar bill and. They were so moved by this experience that they got to the location, they had the whole plan on what to do, but they couldn't go through with it. They just wept for hours. And um, yeah, afterwards they drove back home because they couldn't go through with this plan of theirs. And um, they saw a church that read, Jesus loves you. They entered the church and that's where they gave their lives to Jesus. And um, this is just a small tale of just a simple act of generosity that changed somebody's life forever that actually saved their lives and um, yeah and I think giving is so much more than just giving at church you know it's a simple act of being generous and I think in this verse it says you'll be enriched 
in every way so that she can be generous on every occasion. He doesn't say some occasions, now and again when you feel like it. Um, I think God has called us to be a generous um, bride for him and we are. Yeah. And I think uh, we should not miss these opportunities in our daily lives whether it is spending time with a colleague like really, really interested in his life, whether it's helping a, uh, a old lady getting to the bus stop. Um, there's so many ways that you can be generous, whether it's your time, your talents, um, whether it's giving money. Um, yeah, so that's my challenge for you this week. And um, yeah, so if you want to give to the church, um, offerings can made, be made at the back at the sound desk, also online on Shofar Online. There's um, banking details where you can do um, EFT transfers. Um, but yeah, just the challenge for this week may we be generous in every way. And um, yeah, can everybody just close their eyes? I'm quickly going to pray. Uh, Father, I just thank you today. Thank you that we can be here, Lord. Thank you that you have blessed us with so many things, Lord. And uh, I pray that we can go out this week, Lord, with a generous heart. May we never overlook the opportunity to give, Lord, because you are the ultimate giver, Lord. I thank you with everything, for everything that you've done, Lord, and uh, I pray that you would be with us this week. In your name alone, amen. A, there's a small part of scripture I want to read before we go into the worship. Um, and uh, just, they, I don't remember who told me this, but there was someone who once told me that we don't worship God because we feel like it. We worship Him because He's worthy. And um, obviously, it's, it's nice when we feel like worshiping Him as well. Um, but uh, so, and this is from Revelation 5. Then I saw in the right hand of Him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Nice soft beat. It's always easier to sing with open lungs. Oh 
can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord?
throne of mercy Where would I kneel But at this cross of grace How great the love How strong the hands that hold us Beautiful So beautiful So
can I ask everybody to um, um, take a step with me and uh, pray with me? And I want to ask you to, to do something we haven't done in a while, but to hold hands. Is that okay for those that feel comfortable? Um, can we all hold hands? I want to pray for us as a shofar family. love for families for our families that we will have one day I thank you for the families that we are in that we can pray for them that we can pray for restoration that we can thank you for the families that we have that blessed us Lord God and I can thank you that we can be together as a family as your bride being excited for the day that you come back you come back and we can see you face to face, oh God. I thank you for this wonderful presence. I thank you for touching our hearts. I thank you for the new hope, and the life that your Holy Spirit brings and flows over us. Your sweet aroma, your wonderful presence. What a privilege to be here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Wimpy. All right. Well, good day, everybody. Um, we don't see each other that much face-to-face, -face, streaming and all, so I'm going to give myself a quick introduction. My name is Christopher Stier. Uh, there's my lovely wife, and my three kids just uh, went off. Uh, we're speaking about families, and I can say that I've been, I've been blessed with 17 wonderful years of marriage. And um, yeah, if everybody, like, every one of you could have a wife like Esther, I wouldn't need to uh, give this uh, sermon today, but um, you don't, so here you go. Uh, you have to bear with me for another couple of minutes. It's going to be, uh, I'm going to need to cover a lot because um, I'm busy with a sermon that, that God has been um, speaking to me. For so many years, <clears throat> my oldest is 12. Um, it's been a couple of years that, that we've really walked a path with God, that we've really uh, pressed into finding his heart for our family. We know that there is so much going on around our family. And <clears throat> sorry, we've pressed in and we've searched God's heart and we've uh, encountered other families and God has stirred such a love for me to see people thrive, to see families thrive and also to see a legacy come from that. So much more than just what uh, uh, getting a, ma a husband and wife, but also like with Abraham, you see generations um, experiencing the joy and the blessing that comes from a family that's rooted in God. All right. It's, it's a three-part series. Um, the, first, uh, the first sermon I gave a while back was A Hope for Your Future. It's really aimed at at people finding them in their life if they are despondent or in despair or hopeless. Have a look at it. We, I think all the, all the sermons are, are on YouTube. You can, you can go back to that and you can, I want to stir a hope in you for life. Just, just being alive. That's, that, was, that was basically it. And today we're going to shift our focus to family life. Having a family, starting a family, um, uh, being married, all those things. We, uh, I want to bring and I want to um, build upon a verse that uh, is so dear to me, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. 
a hope and a future. Now, this, uh, this hope is, um, is something that is really also an important part that we need to hold on to if we read in Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. If you're building your faith, you need to know what you're hoping for. You need to know what you're going to have faith in. And today, we want to stir that hope so that you can have faith for your own families one day. Um, it's really starting from the basics. So if you're uh, new to families, if you're new to relationships, if you're new to, uh, to parenting, um, I'm basically going to take 17 years of uh, marriage and give you all the, the best the best uh, nuggets, the best information, the best the, the things that made the most impact in my life, I want to share to, to you today. Um, and it, 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 what you need to understand it is it's, it's a really a broad subject. Um, it's kind of, when I look at, at family, at family life, uh, I don't know if, uh, when, you, when you get engaged, some of you, sometimes you get a nice big diamond, really big one, chunky, uh, that's nice. But the diamond sparkles. It really has a, has a shine. It, it, it catches your eye. Some, um, and they, they get it right by taking a stone, a normal stone that's like a piece of glass, and making faces on it. 58 faces, right, Esther? 56. 56. She's a jeweler, so she, she knows I have to be correct. 56 faces on this diamond is shaped, is is polished and cut perfectly at the correct angle from each other to each other. And what you get is you get a stone that from being um, dull, maybe the light can shine through it to something that sparkles, something that really reflects God's light into this world. And what you need to know about families is it's a really a combination of so many aspects and factors and things that happen through our life that all need to come together for it to spark. It's so easy for a family to lose one of those facets and things, things disintegrate or things break down from one simple thing. But to keep it all together needs for us to look at the big picture, to everything, and we're going to cover it all. We're going to cover husbands, being a husband, being a wife, uh, creating that family, fatherhood, motherhood, and children. And God's goodwill and pleasure and his hope for your family. We're going to look at um, what does the Bible say? How does the Bible help us? How, how, is, how does God want to help us with our families and with all these uh, parts? And he's, he wants to um, uh, uh, give us a hope. He wants to give a, like, a, like a vision, like, like a dream. I, I want a family like that one day. I really, uh, that, that sounds, that, what those couple have, what that family has, that's so special to me. And we can look in the Bible where God shows us that this is what I hope for. This is, this is really good. Are you ready for that? Everybody good? Everybody on board? Um, it is, especially if, if you come from a broken family, um, families nowadays are ripped apart. That's why it stirs so in my heart when I see families ripped apart, families in bondage, um, uh, and, and then some families that, that start broken, that never even form completely, that never even uh, form in, in God's plan, in, in, in God's will. And we're going to bring it all together so that you can have, a, let's say, a strong action plan, a goal, and understanding of, of how everything fits together. Um, we'll get to the end why, why it's all important um, to, to really look at, at all these aspects and to know that each one of them is important for God and God has given us uh, instruction for that and no one should be taken lightly. God gives us this wonderful, wonderful promise in Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in, this, in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on this law day and night. That person 
is like a tree planted by streams of waters, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. And you can see the tree standing by the water. Now imagine your whole family is serving God. It becomes, it becomes a couple of trees. Now imagine a whole community of believers serving God. It becomes a forest, a lush forest with a wonderful stream running through it, cooling, soothing, wonderful. That's, that's one of those, those um, dr- hopes and dreams I have for my house, for our church, and for our community, for nations, and what God, I think, uh, what I believe has for this world. Right, shall we dig in? It's, uh, it's a long journey. There's a lot to cover. Um, the first tool I want to give you, all right, in your toolbox for having a successful, wonderful, fantastic family is your own willpower. You have give, you've been given free will, but in order to use that will, you need some willpower, uh, kind of like a muscle that you need to, to exercise. Uh, Philippians 2, verses 12 and 13, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his great purpose. All right? You have a will. You chose it. You can choose to serve God. But sometimes you need to take action. And that needs you need some willpower, all right? And now you've, you, can, you can kind of know where to practice um, if we look at, at all these aspects um, for your family. Let's start with marriage. That's, the first, that's kind of the first step. Um, two people need to come together, uh, a husband and a wife. Uh, for some, it's easy, and for some, it's hard. For some people, it's really a struggle to take that first step to get over that inhibitions to get, uh, to get the confidence to speak to someone, all right? Um, okay, finding a, a girlfriend or a, or, a, or a boyfriend might be easier than finding a husband or a wife. That, that there's a bit of a difference there. So, so it's, uh, um, but I want to show you today in God's word how, how he participates in this process, all right? God wants to help you. God wants to go through it. God wants to... to, um, to Maybe give some, to open someone's eyes um, or uh, give you that confidence, all right? When, uh, when you feel God move, you need that willpower to, uh, to take that step, right? That's, uh, otherwise, you're never going to ask someone on a date. Otherwise, you're never going to, uh, to take that, that first step to, to write a letter, right? So we need willpower. We need willpower. Um, I've got two uh, wonderful examples that I want to share where God uh, participated in this process of bringing people together. The first one is in Genesis 24, where we see Abraham asking his servant, please, will you go to the country, our home country, where we have our family, uh, where, where we have all our families, and go find a wife for my son, Isaac. And the servant went and he prayed. He said, God, please help me. Will you give me some guidance? Um, will you... Um, not a sign, but, but can you help me? Because there's so many people, so many uh, opportunities. Uh, is there a way that you can help me find this, this wife that God has predestined? And he asks for a sign, and God, um, uh, Rebecca, answers, and she, she f- fills, gives him water and all his camels. Uh, it, it's a wonderful example of servanthood, but it also shows me that God brought them together with a divine purpose. So that's a wonderful story. There's another one, and there's a lot, of, uh, a lot I can take from f- uh, for my family in the book of Ruth. Uh, in Ruth 3, we read about um, how this, this woman from Moab came back to Judah, to Bethlehem, and then God provided... Uh, um, a, a, red, a redeemer, uh, a kinsman redeemer is what the Bible calls it. And this kinsman redeemer, 
God opens his eyes. God shows him. God stirs something in him. But he, one, at, at the moment when he sees her, when he sees Ruth on the field, gleaming from, uh, from the field, he says, wow, this is, something really, this is someone really special. This is someone that, oh, is, uh, let's, something is stirred in his heart. All right? And that you can read in Ruth 3. Um, now, interesting, there were, God preordained, uh, pre, uh, let's say, God prepared for situations like this long ago with the Levitic uh, laws. That's why there was something written in the, in, the, in, in, in the laws about the kinsman redeemer. And there could be a way for, for uh, if, if a wife became a widow, for her to still be um, uh, f- uh, taken into a family and looked after so that she doesn't become destitute because um, that in the, in the old days, um, if you didn't have someone looking after you, uh, you, didn't, you, you wouldn't be able to, to plant, you wouldn't be able to sow. It was a really tough times surviving, and God provided a kingsman redeemer to come and say, come live with us, and we will, we will look after you. So God provided he brought, he opened Boaz's eyes, he provided uh, these guidelines and rules long before. He was extremely um, passionate about looking after and bringing families together and looking, for fa- looking after families if something, really, um, if something bad happens like this in this case. And that you can read in Ruth 3. Um, I want to I keep it practical uh, for... Uh, uh, and give some, some things that, that I've picked up in life, all right? Um, nowadays, we've got the digital age. People are in their homes. They only, they only have the internet. And um, you cannot have a marriage really digitally. That's, that's kind of uh, something that, that it, it won't work. Uh, you get to a point and then, and then things won't, uh, uh, can't proceed from there on. So, I want to encourage you. Yes, you can. It's, it's an easy trap to sit and to go through and to feed, to, to just scroll through your feeds, to, uh, to binge watch shows, to really just enjoy your life and relax. But in order to find a husband or wife, we need, our paths need to cross, right? At some, at some point, you actually need to be in the same room or in the same space or see each other, and there should be a spark or you should, your eyes should open, or there should be something that happens, right? You need to, uh, I, for me, it's kind of like I imagine you're in an orbit. I'm an engineer, sorry. So uh, you're in an orbit, and at some point, the orbits need to cross, okay? And if you're way out there, outside of society, secluded from everybody, it's very, very difficult for your path to cross and for you actually to, 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 to get to that, that point and that that interaction that can start something, all right? So if you, uh, if you have this heart for a family, um, know that you need to get out there. Uh, I always say you need, uh, it's, it's wonderful if you have a story, if there's an adventure, if there's uh, something that you did together. So, uh, hey, I, uh, when, uh, when we were um, uh, uh, courting or when we, we went out, um, Esther and I had already made a commitment to each other. We went on hikes together. You learn a lot. When you are um, kind of suffering a bit together, it's, uh, the Bible speaks of, the Bible speaks of uh, purifying through fire. You, know, you purify the relationship. You get all the nasty things out if you suffer a bit. Um, uh, it can be uncomfortable. It shouldn't be dangerous. But get out there. Have some adventures. Do something and, and experience life together, and you build a wonderful story, right? You start to build this wonderful story, and um, with that, with that, uh, when we, uh, uh, we, knew, we know each other since 2001, when we started going out uh, in university, um, I think we, we, met each, we met each other on the first year's camp, and by the 20th of February, I knew that Esther was my wife, and I asked her out. So we studied for four years at university, and in that time, God came, and he, he helped us 
through shofar, through marriage seminar, through, uh, through uh, relationship seminars, through Bible school, through learning so much about God's will and God's plan, just as I'm doing today, God prepared us and he restored us, our identity, and we could, through God and through the Holy Spirit, cast off spiritual bondages. And that, I can testify, was the most wonderful gift. Uh, it has um, truly um, given us a, a most, most wonderful um, intimate relationship, friendship, um, partnership. It all comes from uh, seeing the fruits of the Word of God in our lives, in our relationship, in our marriage, and in our family. And that's why it's, yeah, really exciting. Uh, I'm excited for you. I don't know if you're excited for your family one day, but I'm excited for you because you're at the right place to learn about God, to learn about His will, right? And to get some hope stirred and to use some willpower to do some things that I'm sure we can hear some nice, uh, nice stories uh, in a couple of years of how you, you found someone, you came together, um, yeah, if, uh, maybe when we have coffee, we can, I can give you a good, uh, a good uh, story about, about my life, but it, uh, it's, it's like uh, having color in your, in your tapestry of your life. It, it starts forming this wonderful uh, story. Add color to your life, all right? Don't, uh, don't go for a, a short, easy answer. Um, make it, make it, Make it a, a goal, make it a, make it a dream to have, to go out there, to try some things, and to share life, and to have an adventure, and to have a story, to cross orbits, um, and God can work with that, because when we are moving, God can steer. If we're standing still, God cannot steer you, and that's it. Okay. Being a husband or a wife, now you've met each other things are starting to, to grow into the relationship. Um, there, is, there is this desire for your life to be together. Um, it, is a, it, is a, it, is a, it carries a responsibility. You're going to place your trust in someone. You're going to uh, expose yourself. So you carry a responsibility to care for each other. Um, and we cannot be ignorant of the differences between the husband and the wife, right? We cannot be, you cannot uh, uh, neglect it or say this is, a, this is a silly part of who you are, the fact that you're different. You should conform completely to what my expectation is, to, or to, to how, how it fits me. You need to respect and, and uh, know that there will be uh, differences. I want to show you um, about caring for each other and uh, again, we go to Ruth and Boaz. Uh, we read in Ruth 2, verse 8. So Boaz said to Ruth, My daughter, listen to me. Don't go and gleam in another field, and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Uh, work the field where men are harvesting, and follow after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars. Um, the men have filled. That desire, that yearning, and that realization that someone is going to form part of your life that you need to care for and that you're you have that responsibility, that's, that's I, I think a lot of marriages, it, the, people don't realize this. They just enter it and they just experience it for what they can get from it. And, Bob, and, and Boaz is this wonderful where he says, listen, I know the situation you're in. Let's make a plan to get it better. Let's care for each other. Let's look after each other. Let's take up this responsibility. Because you don't want two people just living together. You want, as God says in his word, they are going to become one flesh. Your lives are going to be so intertwined that if you decide to separate, it's going to be like ripping. Um, uh, um, when you get hurt, and there's something that forms there, uh, Rufi, uh, what's it? This uh, scab, right? Like ripping a scab. It's it's really painful, but you're growing into each other. Okay, care for each other. 
being a husband, some quick tips. All right? Uh, Suzanne Goslin from uh, Focus on the Family, uh, looking, at some of the, looking at some of the resources out there, Focus on the Family, really good for you to, to learn about being a husband, being a wife. Seek to understand your wife. Hmm? Amen? Yes? No? Seek to understand your wife, her personality, love language. If you don't know what a love language is, it's going to be very, very important when you get married one day. And uh, biological makeup. Things happen. It's, it's part of the female uh, uh, constitution, hormones. Things change. You need to be considerate of that. And uh, as you read in Peter 3, verse 7, Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Weaker vessel sounds a bit, uh, sounds a bit uh, not so nice. Imagine a delicate vessel. Imagine something that needs to be protected. Imagine something that needs to be cherished. Right? That's how I see it. It's, some, it's, it's someone that's, that's, that's special and that you, you, you handle with extreme care. Treat her as a gift. We read in Proverbs 5, verse 18. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. It's an instruction from God that she should be carried on your hands, that it should be, she should be considered as a gift. Um, Proverbs 18, verse 22. Oh, I don't have it here. But make sure she feels cherished and know that she thrives on hearing her value. Be verbal about your appreciation. There's a, there's a joke um, that uh, uh, um, the guy, uh, the wife, the wife asks or says to her husband, You've, you don't tell me that you love me anymore. Just say it sometimes. And he says, you know what his answer was? The day we got married, I told you and I love you. And when he changes, I'll let you know. You know, that's, uh, that's basically his, his answer to it. Be verbal about your appreciation and your love. And yes, say I love you to your wife. Remember the love languages? Yes, speaking it is good. But there's five, there's four other ones that you need to, to look at. All right? And if you're a husband, go and look and, and learn about those love languages. Learn to identify them and learn how to uh, make it part of your marriage story. Um, like buying flowers. When, uh, when Simeon, when Esther gave birth to Simeon, I was elated. I was really such, so happy. And I, I went into, uh, I remember going into uh, a flower shop and I just said, bring it on. And later the day, I got, with this, I got there with this massive bouquet of flowers. I was just overflowing with joy and thankfulness. And I remember those flowers standing there, and it was, it was massive and perfect, and it's, um, uh, I have a story. Make showing your love and appreciation as part of your love story in your marriage. And a husband suffers well with his wife. Uh, Ephesians 4, verses 1, uh, 1 and 2. Therefore, uh, the prisoner of the Lord, I, bese I, I therefore, prisoner of the beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Marriage and life is tough. Things change, things happen. Uh, you want to achieve something new, your work. Uh, you lose your job. There are going to be situations in your marriage and in your life together that's going to cause stress. All right? These stressful situations is one of the most wonderful opportunities to show how you can, uh, uh, how you can, how you care about her. And the worst thing you can do is just dismissing it. All right? Suffering well together means you Help each other through those stressful situations. 
It means you, 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 it, you're considerate of the situation. You're considerate of the impact of the situation. And you, 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 try, you manage it. You try to manage it. You speak words of comfort. You take actions to remove the stress. All those things are important um, to come back to a point where things calm down and you can start to, to build and grow um, grow together, offer relief and support. All right. Um, as a guy, spe- uh, being a wife, I always, it's always nice to preach about uh, being a wife because then I can uh, uh, give a lot of uh, guidelines and everybody has to do it. But um, no, um, two things I really uh, prayed about and felt God lay on my heart is uh, covering, uh, covering uh, your husband's weaknesses. Um, uh, men... Yeah, we have weaknesses, right, Stefan? We've, we've got some weaknesses. Um, and if you, I see frowns. No, everybody, all the guys, perfect, just me, sorry. Um, but uh, don't belittle, don't belittle those weaknesses. Um, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it will be taken personally, maybe just to, uh, to make it simple. Um, Another thing I wanted to, uh, to mention that the Bible speaks um, not to be yoked with an unbeliever. Uh, I want to give it a bit of a different twist, all right? Um, the yoking, all right, speaks to where two oxes are pulling a cart, all right? The Bible uses this image where one ox is yoked, a strong ox is yoked with a weak ox, all right? And now the strong one has to pull, the weak one doesn't any work. But what actually happens is, uh, because the, the weak one doesn't pull, the yoke gets twisted, right? And it starts to damage the stronger ox. They, they, cannot, they cannot pull this, this, this cart for so long because it starts to wear. On the, on, and it, it, it's not a sustainable um, uh, situation. I want to maybe shift it around, saying that... Um, in a marriage, you are yoked together. You are pulling together. You have, um, uh, you have plans, uh, you have goals that you want to achieve together. Um, and uh, um, yeah, sometimes you, you, you get a, a marriage where the husband has to do all the work and when he gets home and at the end of the month he realizes that everything is just spent, all the money is spent and He's pulling forward, and nobody else is helping. And at that point, at some point, that, un-yo- that unequally yokedness is going to cause hurt and damage, and at some point, it will just break down. So know that when we are yoked together, everybody needs to pull as hard as each other to reach your goal and to, uh, to grow together as a family. Sounds good? Um, about uh, um, marriage, I, there's, there's a lot of good, uh, good uh, information out there, but uh, uh, Mark, there's a, there's a preacher in the USA, Mark Gungor. Uh, he's got a, a series on laughing your way to a better marriage. Oh, really good stuff. If you, if you go through that series, if you're a, a husband and wife, he really shows these differences, he brings them, he, it, it's really funny, uh, laughing away to you, you'll be uh, rolling on the ground with, with laughter, but uh, Mark Gungor, Laugh Yourself to a Better Marriage, is a, is a good, fun thing to watch together, because he kind of makes these difficult topics, he breaks them down in a really a light atmosphere, speaking about um, the differences, and then coming together as, a fa- as, as, as husband and wife in a marriage. So, um, yeah, if you, need to, uh, if you need some more... Uh, more information about that. Family life. Family life can be daunting. Um, you uh, now have children that come and become part of your family. Uh, they, you sit with this responsibility of keeping these hungering humans alive, fed, going to school. It's daunting. It's a big responsibility. 
Um, a lot of uh, parents really feel that uh, this as a, as a big stress, as a big, uh, um, um, they, they kind of want to want to leave it as long as possible because they know that this changes your life completely. Um, going back to Ruth, uh, we see her father-in-law. There's a story about Elimelech. Ruth 1, verses 1 to 2. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, um, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab. And he and his wife and his two sons, the name of the man was Elimelech. Family, we're talking about that willpower, we're growing our willpower. Family sometimes require action. When the situation changes, when the situation around you changes, you need to keep an eye on that. You need to see what alternatives are there, and sometimes you need to make a hard decision to make a change so that your family can, so that your family can survive. Not, not as dramatic as that. I mean, it's, it's nowadays easy to, to, to make a plan, but you need to keep a close eye on your surroundings and the situation around you so that if you need to make the situation, you don't leave it for another day. You don't neglect your family. Your family, uh, you might be able to, see. If, if, you, if you don't look for it, you might miss God warning you about a situation that needs preparation, that needs action. Um, he took action. This is one example. A family has so many aspects and things that you need to consider. Um, one, one thing I can, I can encourage you is to really look at role models. People that have families that, are, that have happy, successful um, Strong families, those are role models. And I want to mention one role model that, uh, that really touched my heart in terms of walking closely with God and raising his family, serving the community. And, yeah, it was uh, uh, Dr. Harki Sonnenberg um, that unfortunately passed away in April 2021. And if you look at, uh, at a lot of the churches, uh, a lot of the shofar churches, he was so actively involved in speaking about family and marriage. He was so passionate about his own family, about his, his children, and about his grandchildren. Really a wonderful man um, that, uh, that had such an open house. When we were students, we came and we were in his house uh, uh, talked with him. He was always open to share, to share his house, to share, to have people come in and experience it. And this is where we get to that community where the older, more um, experienced couples open up their houses for young people, for young couples to come in and see how they do love life. We're sharing. We're and Dakian, what a wonderful example! What a wonderful example of Dakian and Renee having this completely open house. And it's a, it's a wonderful privilege. If, you, if he invites you for dinner, go there and just see how he does life, how he and Renee manages their relationship and how they build and support each other. What a wonderful marriage to, uh, to experience. And I, I honor you for that, Derek. And what a fantastic, uh, um, so many years of, of being together, uh, growing businesses, growing your families. You can experience it firsthand Go sit by his feet and learn, right? If he gives you advice, it's um, tried and tested, shall I say. Okay, yeah, tried and tested. Um, uh, Harki uh, had uh, two, uh, two wonderful sayings that, that stuck with me. And um, uh, the first one is that there's no place in marriage for the unholy trinity, have you heard of the unholy trinity? No? Um, it speaks about selfishness. Me, myself, and I. All right? so, marriage is a selfless act of giving yourself fully to the other person and they giving themselves fully to you. 
me, myself, and I. And uh, he always, uh, um, when his sons got married, married, he told them this, this wonderful advice. When you marry, you get a princess. Your job is to turn her into a queen. Huh? Sound good? Yeah, I see some smiles. I love it. I love it. More resources if you need to learn about family life. We did uh, uh, in our marriage, um, uh, marriage seminars, we, uh, uh, marriage enrichment, enrichment camps, we did a series by Andy Stanley. He's got a wonderful, wonderful explanation between, of the differences between desires and expectations. Totally, completely turned uh, uh, our uh, relationship to, uh, around. It kick-started a lot of the things in our marriage, and it opened up a lot of our communication, especially for myself and Esther, understanding the difference between a desire and an expectation. Go, go, go look at those, uh, at those uh, sessions from him. And I've already spoken about Mark Gangor, who, um, yeah really funny to watch. We're going to go a bit deeper into family life. Everybody still okay? Uh, it's, it's a lot, but I want to give you a very good, deep overview. Um, so we might need to continue for a while. Um, what I want to speak to you is, is that families, to have a family, it's really important to have a good foundation in the Word, Right? God speaks to us through his word. It's a lot of instruction, but also examples of the effect your choices can have um, in the life of you and your family. There are a lot of sad stories in the Bible of how people made decisions that negatively affected their marriage. And I believe that's part of God's heart for us, is to give us those examples to learn, to say, all right, if you do this, if you're not faithful, there's going to be uh, um, uh, ramifications. The devil can get a hold and he can start to bring death and destruction into your family. Um, so respect that, that, that the word is a wonderful source. It's not an old book for old, uh, old people. It's not something that's just relevant for that times. It has a lot of wisdom and knowledge in there that's still relevant today. I cannot stress that enough. There's a lot of the principles in the Bible that we apply in our marriage still today. And we can see the fruit of that knowledge. Um, there are aspects around a family that you need to consider. You might be faithful to God, but still there is things that happen in your life that's, that's out of your control, some things that, that come to, to break down your family, and you, you're wondering, God, how, how is this? And uh, I found that because families are so, um, how shall we say, subject to the economic conditions of a country, you need to work, you need to provide for your family, you're probably committed for a couple of years providing a home and a house. Um, Understand that the economic surroundings, the economic uh, atmosphere around you um, can have a very significant impact on you as a family. There's also a darker side of this. Um, healthy families are not as profitable as broken families. Healthy families are not as profitable as broken families. And... If you look at uh, the cost of a divorce, um, now there are, if you, have, if you have a divorce, you need two houses. You might have an idealistic view of the world, but know this, that there are a lot of vultures sitting and waiting for a marriage to break down and for the impact of that breakdown to flow over so that they can start and just pull out everything from that family and from that heritage. Healthy families are not as profitable as broken families. There are people that wouldn't mind if your family gets broken. Uh, another thing that we need to watch out for is lifestyle. Huh? 
lifestyle. Um, people market a very good lifestyle. The Joneses are there next to you. You want to keep up with them. Um, but it has, it has, a, it has a, uh, it could lure you into debt. And uh, debt could, if it's not managed properly, could build and build and build because you've got this lifestyle to maintain. And at some point, that debt just collapses everything underneath you. And you cannot, you cannot provide for the family. And it, it brings a lot of destruction. So I want to give you that warning um, that, uh, that, that there is a, that lifestyle. It, uh, marketing entices us to, to have a good lifestyle, but it, it, it comes with the risk that it can damage your family. There is a spiritual attack. The devil knows um, the bondage a broken family can have. Uh, there's a lot of, that we speak about in the Foundation 3 course, the curse of fatherlessness. If the father isn't in the house, the devil knows that this causes a breakdown. It will cause, uh, um, it will have a significant impact on your family. So the devil is also there to, uh, to break your family apart. Just know that. But God provides, doesn't... Uh, uh, where he leads, he guides, and where he guides, he provides. And if God brought this desire in you to have a family, he's going to provide for you. And if you stay in his protection, um, he's going to protect you, and you can trust in him, and you can be hopeful that even with the destruction out there, that there is a hope that God can, can look after, uh, can provide for you, even if, if the, econo the economic times are tough or... Um, uh, you, make, you need to make decisions, even if it's not what you want to do, but it's for God. God will bless that. It's very, very important. Important that you have a community and a church. Well, if you are married out there, at some point, you need the input. You need people to support you. If you are having a child, you're going to need people that surround you to support you because it's a time where a lot of things can change, where you need people to be there, to look after you. Um, if you have a child, uh, uh, a lot of the, uh, the cell groups, they uh, create a roster, and then they will bring food every evening. Um, a wonderful practice that I've seen so many times in, uh, in, in shofar churches all around the world, really looking out for each other and saying, all right, they're going through a tough time. I went through it. I know what they're going through, and I know this will bless them. Keep your eyes open to bless each other because this is a wonderful community and families need you. Families need community. Families need this church. And if you, are, if you want to start a family, being in this church, God has uh, created it to support you, right? The cell groups are there so that people know of you and know the struggles that you're going through and they can come in and support you. It's a wonderful thing, just as God provided the Levitic laws for Ruth to, pre, uh, to be provided for by Boaz, he's providing a church, the church as a community that supports you for your family. Um, okay, last pro tips, limit your lifestyle. Uh, we made a decision long ago that uh, the lifestyle that we have has got certain boundaries, all the committed expenses, this is practical stuff, all right? All the committed, all the things where you, where you take out a bond, where you've got uh, uh, money that needs to be spent every month, those only come from one salary, so that if the other salary falls away, then you, you're, not, uh, 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 you're not struggling making, making those monthly payments. And also, even in that, when you build a we're talking about a lifestyle, what car you drive, where you live, the size of your house, the, 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 um, the furniture you have, don't be exorbitant. Try to stay within, uh, stay within this, this, this one salary guideline. Uh, uh, before you decide, budget the tithe, really important, and then you will see that God can start to bless you because at some point, as I spoke, the econ economic situations could, could cause one income to go away, and then if you are, need to pay the debts and you've got, you need both income, then you're starting to get blacklisted, and it, it just snowballs into a crisis situation. 
So be, um, be conservative on that part. I can really encourage that. That has uh, had uh, a couple of instances in our life. Uh, it has helped us a lot. Insurance. All right. When I, uh, when I read these uh, Levitic laws about God providing for the widows, right? You either need a strong community where if something happens to you, if you guys, if, you, if you're the breadwinner, something happens to you, who's going to look after your wife? Most of us or a lot of people have got a strong family. Family can look after her. But if you don't have that, know that you need to put something in place, right? Otherwise, it can get really messy. Uh, you see widows suffering and um, they basically spend all their savings and at some point they become destitute and they have to go live on the street. It's really sad to see. So, so know that this is, this is an important thing for me. Um, have a will. <laughs> uh, if you don't have a will, it will take uh, a couple of months before there is any money available for your family to continue. And that's six months that they have to sit without income, without what they need to get in their new life going. So have a will, guys. It's um, pro tips. Very, very important. Let's see, almost done. Um, we're quickly going to glance over fathers and mothers because that's a whole a big, big part of life. There's so much things. But all I can say is if you're a young father or a young mother, having all these uh, uh, discussions about it, um, it just goes over your head. It's fine. You basically climb into a super tube, a slide, and it's six years, for the, for the first six years of your kid's life, you're just, you're just keeping it together. But um, there is one thing that I want to highlight that you should never lose sight of. You should never lose focus of. Um, and that is God requires an active, there's three roles that must be active in the family all the time. The priest the prophet, and the king. The priest looking spiritually interceding for his family, the prophet getting words from God for the family, getting the wisdom, getting the insight from God, and the king that protects and provides. And the Bible speaks a lot about the husband providing that. And, if, uh, um, and so you need to take that responsibility. But if you're in a family that there is, the husband doesn't take up that responsibility. Um, you can look at the strongman principle. In the house, if you don't have a strongman, the Bible speaks of uh, if there isn't a strongman in the house, it's open for pillaging. The devil can come and he can grab everything and steal and, and um, cause that destruction. You need an active strongman in the house. And that is something that the Bible women and men can take up, but it needs to stay active. It needs to stay active, even if you are uh, uh, with young children, with young, with young infants, life is happening, new jobs, everything changing, never lose sight of those three roles, the priest, the prophet, and the king. If it's not there, the devil has got an open door to come and to kill and to steal, and you might have everything in place. But at some point, the devil just finds the weak point and he starts to bring that death and destruction and it could spiral into a dis to the family, dissolving. Really sad. Um, and I felt God pressing it on my heart. Don't lose sight of those three roles. Actively, actively um, um, have them as part of your family life, as part of when you pray for your family, when you uh, uh, provide for your family, there should always be um, intercession for your family, uh, guidance and words from God and protection and provision. Right. So we're at the, at the end uh, of, of this big overview. We looked at uh, husband, wives, fathers, mothers. Uh, if you have a family um, and you get married at 30, it's going to be... 60 part of your life for, for over 60 years. It's, it's like uh, when you buy a nice bed because you spend a third of your life in it. Family has got a big impact on your life. And 
I want to encourage you to really seek God, to really press into it, to really go and do Bible school. Bible school is a wonderful uh, uh, um, opportunity to delve deep into, into God's word to lay a strong foundation. God blessed the world through families. God has got a passionate heart for families. He, uh, when Abraham, Abraham, he wasn't appointed a CEO, he wasn't appointed uh, a king, he wasn't appointed uh, uh, a leader, he was a dad. And through his family, the nations were blessed. Through his family, through your family, God has got a hope and a plan for your family. But it needs something. It needs something really, it, it, it needs a lot of action, a lot of willpower from your side. And I want to conclude with this verse. Uh, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him, her, to wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall. For it was founded on the rock. Why do you build a house on a rock? Because at some point, there can be a storm. At some point, life happens. At some point, things are going to change. At some point, you're going to... The devil is going to try to steal from you. At some point, um, there might be death in the family. And God calls us, build your house on a strong foundation, on his word. Together with his spirit, honoring the way that Jesus invited us to build a family. Choose a good foundation, build a strong house, and remember to maintain the roof because otherwise you you sleep wet. Um, (laughs) And with that strong foundation, you will see situations come where other families would be totally destroyed. Your house will stand. You will see after 17 years of marriage, you will have a list of testimonies of God providing, bringing breakthrough, situations where things could have gone really bad, situations that were dire, situations where there was friction, a a breakdown of communication. But because we joined Shofar in 2001, we had four wonderful years of laying a solid biblical foundation And so many times we see uh, uh, other families breaking down and you talk to them and you speak to them and they tell you, no, this happened and we cannot continue. Or this happened and it was, the, the family was ripped apart. And we realize, wait, but in God's word, there is a word of correction In God's word, there was a word of wisdom. Did you not know this? Didn't you apply it? Didn't you see that God wanted to help you so much? He provided so much for us to restore these situations. And you allowed the situation to deteriorate until the family was destroyed and broken. And that is not God's heart. That is not God's plan. God's plan is for you to have a family that prospers, that brings a blessing to all the nations. That's that's the heart I want to share with you today. That God loves you, loves your family. You might be in a family yet still uh, with, with your parents. God has a heart 
for your family, for that family, for your family that you're in now or also. If you are serving as an au pair in a family, God has a wonderful plan. You have an opportunity to bring a pleasant aroma into that family. Maybe God can even use you to turn that family for God. God loves family. And he wants, he's got a hope and a plan for yours. Amen. Can I pray for us? God, we saw that you have created us, male and female, Lord God. You have created us. And you have, in your word, showed us that this, when we come together and when you join us, through your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that we can enjoy a life, Lord God, and we can be a blessing to this world, Lord God, as, as, as that, that, that's far beyond we can even imagine or comprehend, Lord God. But we see through your word that you are passionate about every facet of family and of family life, Lord God, about every step that needs to be taken. You want to take that step with us, Lord God, and that one day, Lord God, you want to, to joy, um, share in the joy we have of a wonderful marriage of children that came from our family, Lord God, and from uh, uh, this, this, this experience, this life um, adventure that we could share, not only um, on ourselves going on adventures, but together with our husband or wife, with our children, Lord God, and we can have a hope, Lord God. I want to pray specifically for, for everybody um, that feels that this is not for me. I want to pray specifically, um, maybe if the band, if you can, can you play some background music? Just, uh, I feel this, this, that specifically today, you've, you're in a family and you just see destruction, you just see um, hopelessness, you just see that, that this is something I would never ever want. There is no desire in you for, for a family, there's no, uh, there's actually, you, you want to avoid it at all costs. And maybe that's just something that the devil came and to steal. And it wasn't part of God's plan. It wasn't what God intended for your life. It does, it's not part, um, when he sees you, he sees a future with a family. When he sees you, he sees the richness and the joy of a life where you partnered with God and you could experience the wonder of a godly family. Seeing the Holy Spirit working with you, seeing God giving you wisdom, seeing God protecting and providing you, it's a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful experience to see God um, provide for your family. It's a wonderful experience to have a family, to have a wonderful wife, to have three children that grow as, as um, strong, strong trees before them because they grow in a blessed home that is full of God and that is full of God's word and that is obedient to God's word. I want to pray today for, for you. I want to pray today if you, can I ask you, if everybody can keep their eyes closed, if you, if you really if you, if you say you don't want a family and that the family is not for you, but it brings a pain on your heart, can you raise your hand? If you say, I, I, I cannot imagine having a family. If you, if you say, I, it's, it's something I cannot even begin to comprehend or grasp. How is this even possible for me to step into and to have a family? Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity. Pray today for your beautiful children, Lord God, here and, and 
on Facebook. I thank you for the opportunity to come today and bring a seed. To today, look at the seed of faith, the seed of hope, Lord God, and to prepare the soil for the seed to be planted in these lives, Lord God, to take hold of this hope, to take hold of your word, Lord God, and say, God, I give this to you. I lay it at your feet. And if it's your will for me to have a family, I pray that this seed would spring roots, Lord God, and that it would grow, Lord God, into a desire, Lord God, and it would grow into uh, actions, Lord God, actions that, that take us a step forward, 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 until we see your provision, Lord God. Today is the day to let go of that lie. That you cannot be a husband. That you cannot be a wife. That you cannot be a father and that you cannot be a mother. Pray after me. If everybody can pray after me, then we can, we can share in this. Lord God, thank you for creating me. Thank you for a life. And thank you that this life can include a family. Thank you that I can have a family. And that it will be blessed. I reject the lies of the devil that I cannot be a husband, that I cannot be a wife, that I cannot be a father, and that I cannot be a mother. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for having this opportunity to share with you this uh, passion in this heart. Um, it was really a, a really a special time. And uh, yeah, if you need prayer, if you need ministry, if you need someone to pray with for you, please come to the front after the service. We can pray for you. And we can together stand with you in this new decision that you've made. And we can help you and support you with that through us as a family. Thank you so much. Yeah, let's rise for uh, just another time of prayer and just surrender to God and just open our hearts. And This is 
something just because you speak and, and ask it of us you enable us to do so Lord. And thank you for your your word that brings life Lord. and father help us to to not just take um, what we receive now for for today Lord, but let, let what your word spoken to our hearts remain through this week lord that uh, when we go through our days and through our business lord that it would come back into our thoughts and into our hearts lord whether it's through one of the songs or whether through one of the scriptures we ask that you would linger with us, Lord, and that what was placed in our hearts today would, would bear fruit through this week as well. 